Okay, welcome. This is part five. Um, and you're going to see that uh, when you're working on your tangent graph, that we don't really get a good perspective of what our tangent look, gra graph looks like because Excel, in this example, I have a maximum value in my T chart below of 15,000, and Excel's trying to chase that. And I've got a minimum value of negative 33,400, and Excel's trying to chase that. We have vertical asymptotes, and, and if we get close to the asymptote, in our 10,000 steps that we're taking, we're going to try to chase some really big numbers. And unfortunately, neither of our other custom Y scalers work very well because we still are trying to chase those big values. And we'd like to see maybe the more interesting part of tangent. So um, real quickly, the, the interesting part of tangent occurs generally around its center line. That's what we're interested in. And the center line of the tangent is D. B does not affect the height of the tangent. That's a pre-function, as we call it, that affects the right-left or the width. And C is a shift right uh, affects it as a shifting right-left. But A affects the height. So A and D have an impact on how high we want our graph to go and how low we want our graph to grow. I'd like to go up from D a certain factor of A and down from D a certain factor of A to try to capture the, the interesting part of tangent where we get that, that steepest part or that biggest change in our curve. So how I'm gonna do that is I could record a macro and go in and, and mess with it, but I've got macros that deal with our Y scale right now. So I'm gonna go into Alt F11, open up my macros, and I've got this macro four. I think that's a dead one, but I'm gonna leave it. Uh, before I do that, I might want to check and see my chart. My chart is named chart2. So if I have a, a function out there that deals with my Y scale and works with a chart2, maybe I can steal from myself. And as you might expect, I do. I just, the function macro deals with chart2. So I'm going to grab all of that function, copy it. I'm going to find some white space, paste it, and let me put that up here. I'm going to rename that guy. Um, let's go with custom for tangent. Give it some name that, that has some meaning to you. So this is one I'm going to use primarily just for custom or just for tangent graphs. It may be useful for, for if we were to do a cotangent. It might be useful for secant, cosecant as well if we were doing those. So again, I am interested in this value in C5, my center line, and this value in, in uh, C2, my three that makes this three times as tall as a regular tangent graph. And I, I hope my old pr professors and math teachers aren't listening to this, but I'm going to refer to A just as the amplitude. Although to say that, that if that was a three, that the tangent has an amplitude of three is inaccurate. Um, it, it is affecting the height. So, so I'm just going to refer to it as amplitude. So again, my center line, C5, my amplitude, C2. So I'm going to capture those guys in my macro before I determine what my Y min, Y max are. So I'm going to introduce a variable. I'm going to call it CL, center line, equals cells, row 5, column 3, C5. Row 5, column 3, C5. And I'm going to introduce a variable AMPL equals cells 2, comma 3. That is C2, row 2, column 3. Again, right back here, C2, C5. They're part of my custom for tangent macro now. So now my Y min is going to be a factor of those. And I'm going to have it be my center line. And then for my Y min, I'm going to go down my, I'm going to go down and I've, I've practiced this before and this gave a pretty good look. I'm going to go down four times my amplitude. However, if my amplitude is negative, that would actually make my Y min become big. So I'm going to multiply by, I'm going to go minus four times the absolute value of my amplitude. And very similarly, for my Y max, I'm going to go steal for myself, copy paste from center line up four times the absolute value of amplitude. My Y min is in place, my Y max is in place, and I am ready to give this guy a shot. 
So what do I need? I need a button to push. I'm going to use a text box. I'm going to insert a text box. And I'm just going to call this one Y scale. And I'm not, you could, you could call it custom for tangent if you wanted, but I'm going to call it Y scale. And this is the only button I'm going to leave on here because to be honest, these don't serve much of a purpose on tangent graphs because they're always going to be chasing those asymptotes. So I will uh, perhaps, maybe I'll make this one blue too because I guess it really is kind of about the, the blue function. And I'm going to right click, assign that macro to custom for tangent. And I'm going to hope this gives me a good look at what's going on. Pretty good look. Let me change my X min, say, to, to negative 3.14 to 3.14. You know, I can change some other things around. And you may say, well, how's that going to work? How's that going to work if I change D to, say, 100? And you're going to say, oh, well, that's no good. Well, I haven't activated it yet activate it pretty good. How about if A gets bigger? Let's say A is 50. Doesn't look real good. We don't get the real interesting curve part, but I factored in A. How about if we have a negative A, negative 30? Pretty good, but I haven't even hit this yet. Gives it pretty good shape. Now it gives me a good idea. Let's take a look tangent line, make sure that my tangent's right. Negative 1.9 maybe. Looks pretty good, but negative 1.9. There we go. We got a pretty nice tangent. What if I make the graph? Uh, what if I change my B value to a positive? Looks pretty good. Okay. So there you have it. That, is there anything about this graph that looks a little bit troubling right now? The fact that, oh, it's upside down and backwards. I was a little nervous for a second that it was going that it was that it was going backwards, but it's upside down and backwards, so nothing to fear there. So again, 2000 looks kind of ugly. I've got a good fix for it. I'm pretty convinced that I don't want these guys on here. I'm going to delete that guy, try to delete this guy, and I'm going to delete this guy, and I'm pretty satisfied that that is the one I'm going to want to be activating. So there you have it. Hopefully that hopefully that's helpful for you. Uh, hopefully you have some understanding of what's going on with that. And you can experiment around. I thought four times uh, the amplitude, or what I'm calling the amplitude, did a pretty nice job. Um, good luck with that, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.